guys, what's going on? This is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Mini. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm about to get started with some rumble action. No big deal today. I was kind of thinking this morning to myself, what is the potential of the strategic possibilities in this game as we scale to not a one week after the game has been released, but one year after the game has been released? Five years. Where does the strategy lie in this game? Where's the depth of this game? What direction are we going to go with this game? That's what I've been thinking about lately, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. I think there's going to be a lot more than some people are giving credit for Clash Mini in terms of what it can be in that level. It's not just a casual tabletop game, which in a lot of ways it is, but also I think this is going to be a super viable competitive esport. And one thing that I want to talk about, or two things in today's video, are kind of elements of that strategy that new players ought to be aware of. And I want to give a big shout to Angel, because after my first video, this is my fifth now, I think, on Clash Mini. After my first one, he messaged me and he said, hey dude, I think that you might not be aware of this. And granted, this is the second day the game was out, but I wasn't aware of it. And that is, for example, look at this P.E.K.K.A. Look at this P.E.K.K.A. Let me actually get something on the board first. Uh, but look at this P.E.K.K.A. If I want to upgrade the P.E.K.K.A., I can't. Let the Spirit Goblin. If I want to upgrade, I can choose the skill that I'm going to upgrade on my Spirit Goblin. I can choose the skill, right? A lot of people don't realize that. And that's where one of the elements, again, where the strategy is really going to develop inside this game. This is kind of a crappy round. It's tough to play in chat at the same time. But you guys get the point. You can choose which skill you want to upgrade on your minis. If you don't know that, well, now you do. Everybody ought to know that because that's a huge strategic option for you guys. Look at the deck that I'm running right now. I take an L. I can't take two losses. This is Rumble, not Duel, Ash. Can't take two losses. Got to pay attention to this next one here. So think about it. Think about what skills, which abilities make the most sense for the deck that you are playing. I cannot stress that enough, guys. I really can't. Let's go, John. Oh, let's go this way, this way, and let's go double, and then the bowler will tank. This should be good. What does my dude have? He does have a minor, so let's back that P.E.K.K.A. up a little bit and hope for the best here. So, again, upgrades in the late game. You need to, So look at the P.E.K.K.A. The first ability, the first skill on P.E.K.K.A., which is the auto upgrade if you just drag your P.E.K.K.A. onto the arena, right, is going to increase her DPS. In this deck, I have a plenty of DPS on my own. I have Ewiz, I have Bowler, I have Spirit Goblin. I have plenty of options. I have Countess as my champion, as my hero. And you need that good hero synergy for whatever minis that you have. You really need that. It's crucial in this game. So on my P.E.K.K.A., I'm gonna, I don't need the extra damage. Instead, I want to go ahead and go right to the second option, which gives P.E.K.K.A. a shield because she's kind of a tank in this deck that I have. That's just one example for you guys. There's so many on every mini in this game. Be careful when you pick your ability. Think about it. I tap on the P.E.K.K.A. one time, then you're given reduce incoming damage by one on number two. Okay, I'm going to go with the second ability because that's what I want here. You, does that make sense to you guys? You guys picking up what I'm putting down here? Okay, again, I really blew it here. and <laughs> I deserve to lose this rumble, that's for sure, guys. Oof. But, okay, that's number one, right? Number two is selling, right? Especially in duels. You're not going to see it as much necessary in rumbles because your opponent's going to change all the time. But you might, but you know, even in rumbles, you might notice in the beginning, in, be, in the beginning of each match, you see where, what units, what minis they used last time and where they placed them on the board, right? That is huge in terms of strategy inside this game. That's absolutely massive. So you want to take a look, especially if they have any miners, which hero are they using? You need to identify all of this. So they have a P.E.K.K.A. They have what? Barbarian King. So they have Ewis. So I'm going to upgrade my Ewis. I only have one ability, so I'm just going to use that ability, obviously. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to get, oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Let's just at least switch sides here and keep the Spirit Goblin where he is. I left two Elixir on the table. That might end up costing me. Again, I got to get better at playing and commentating on the same time. But let's see how this one plays out here, guys. But you guys get what I'm saying here? It's really important, right? Really important that we choose our abilities very wisely. Look at that P.E.K.K.A. Eating up so much damage. We're going to end up winning. And a lot of it was based on upgrading the right abilities. And we win this rumble, guys. Okay? The second thing I want to talk about is the selling. Now, we didn't see it there. We didn't see it at the in, in during those matches, but selling your units, especially in duels, can give you a whole new kind of strategic dynamic that you guys can take advantage of. Let me do a quick match for you guys, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, okay? Let's go into, let's keep the same deck. I like this deck. I like Giant, Giant Skeleton. He's growing on me, man. The big fella. The big fella with the big bomb. I like him. All right, so let's go Let's go to, I'm just going to switch to, to casual, because all I want to do is have some fun. I got a feeling I'm not the only one. I'm sorry, guys. I'm old. I'm weird.
All right, so second thing is selling, right? It, this game is all about chess, all about mind games. That's why I love it so much, right? And what we want to do here, guys, is when you think you're predictable, when you think your opponent's going to be able to easily predict what you're going to do, you need, you're, you're playing the game wrong, right? So what that entails is not just changing your board position, but also strategically selling units in the late game, okay? Selling minis back. So a lot of new players don't recognize this. Let's just go ahead and, you know, start out with a Spear Goblin. I don't have a bowler. We'll go with a Giant Skelly, and we'll just put him right over here to have a mirror option. Uh, but in the next round, I'm not going to play it all through. I don't care if I win here. It's just a casual match. I want to show you about selling, right? He's going to start predicting us. So that was a pretty easy victory for us this first round. We'll play one more round. We'll kind of go with the same thing. We're not going to switch anything up. I'm not going to get too crazy because we're not that predictable yet, right? So let's get a bowler and then let's double up this. I need a tank, a spear goblin. So I'm just going to load up this lane, right? Might be an unwise decision, but whatever. I just want to show you. So now we're going to go heavy on that, that, that magic power tile of the opponent, right? We got the bowler, we got the spear goblin. We're going to kill what's ever in that lane, hopefully. How could this happen to me? And there's nothing in the lane. So they do, they do a good job, right? They do a good job. We're still going to win, though. It's okay. We got a nice mirrored, leveled up, upgraded spear goblin, right? So we win that one. Gonna go for the third match, but now he knows what we're doing here. Now it's a mind game. He's seen me two times overload the power square. Am I gonna do it again? Well, maybe I take away the bowler and maybe I sell back everything. And maybe I go with a super charge, uh, super charge, excuse me, P.E.K.K.A. instead. Okay, I have to go with these guys. I have to go with these guys. But maybe I go with one. Maybe I go him over here. And now I have a P.E.K.K.A. on the ground. So like, listen. Not the best example. You guys get what I'm seeing, saying though, right? You can upgrade, you can sell back not just your minis, but you can sell back all the upgrades that you made on those minis. So listen, am I gonna be the best player ever to play this game? Obviously winning rumbles and winning duels, you know, sweeping duels, obviously I am gonna be the best player ever. But aside from that, <laughs> Jokes aside, I'm not going to be the best player, but the players who are the best will be the players who can quickly, quickly, alacrity, sell back their units, play mind games, change their board positioning, and upgrade the right skills all at the same time. That is how strategy, high-end, high-level strategy is already starting to develop in this game inside the top 200, which right now, I think I'm right outside. You're seeing this more and more often. You can see how the game is evolving. So start practicing these things early on, and I promise with time and repetition, it will become easier. You'll be able to fit more things in, more decisions in to that short time period we have as prep before each Clash Mini match. So guys, that's all I have for you today. If you want more Clash Mini content, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Clash Mini videos as often as we can here, ideally daily alongside Clash Royale. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care, guys.